very familiar scripture, and I'm going to give you uh, just a, a little thought on it tonight. We've been thinking this the third Wednesday night. We've been talking about being thankful. You cannot go wrong. You cannot go wrong being thankful. You can and will go wrong griping and murmuring and belly aching and whining all the time because you don't like this and you don't like that and that ain't right and your husband ain't this or your wife ain't that. And, you know, there, we could all do that. We could all do that and cry as a river, you know. But uh, you'll never go wrong by thanking God for what you do have. Amen. If you got a husband to go to church with you, you ought to shout. I know a lot of people don't. A lot of women. If you got a wife that'll serve God and go to church, you ought to shout. I know a lot that don't. Psalm 100 says this, verse 4, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful. That's what we said last week in Colossians 3. Be ye thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, hallelujah, and His truth endureth to all generations. Uh, I guess the title of this little study tonight would be The Power of, of uh, Thanksgiving, The Power of a Thankful Spirit. What, what is the power of a thankful spirit? I'm, I'm thankful um, for church. You know, uh, if you try to live for the Lord, you will know immediately that the devil is going to try to stop you. You know it. He's going to try to stop you. These, I, I was telling uh, Tabitha on the way down here at the church tonight, I was telling her about uh, how the devil even uses school. The public school, is the devil uses that to keep people out of church. I went to a public school, but it wasn't nothing like it is now. Did you know when I went to school, at a public school, we... They let us out of basketball practice early, only had like a 30 or 40 minute practice and get out of there at 5 o'clock so people could go to church. Of course, we didn't go, but that's how much respect the public school, the public school, not Christian school, the public school would not have a ball game on Wednesday night. Would not. That's the way it used to be in this country. Now, there's absolutely a, a, a lady in our church told me today, her son is it playing baseball or basketball or something? They're having a tournament tonight. And listen to this. The game don't start till 8.30. Don't even start. What if we did something with church kids that didn't even start till 8.30? How many mamas would say, oh, mine can't come. Mine can't come. They, they got to be in the bed. That's their bedtime. 8.30, the game starts. That will put that kid in the bed tonight earliest 10 o'clock, earliest, which ain't no problem with me. I, don't, I never have had a problem with that. But some people, uh, when it comes to church, good Lord, they can't, can't do nothing. Can't, if we had Christmas play practice at 8.30 out at night, nobody would bring their kids. And you know that as well as I know it. It's a shame that the world dictates to us uh, and we bow, uh, uh, bow down to all that stuff that the public school is doing. But anyway... Uh, let's have a thankful spirit, a thankful spirit. Now, there's four things that a thankful spirit will do in your life. Number one, a thankful spirit will keep you humble, will keep you humble. Now, we could use a lesson on this in America. There's nothing more silly than a person to be proud, nothing more reasonable than to be humble. Hum what does humble mean? Uh, it means... Uh, uh, get down, get down. Don't walk around like you're something special and you're something great. You're something wonderful because the truth is you're not. Uh, Jesus got down before the, the Last Supper and got down and washed the disciples' feet. Now you think about that. The Son of God got down in the floor and took a towel and washed them disciples' feet. One at a time. Wouldn't you think it should be the other way around? But the Lord humbled himself. And you know that's what you have to do. I've heard people get up and pray, Lord, keep me humble. The, you're not supposed to ask the Lord to keep you humble. He said, humble yourselves. You are to humble yourself. Humble yourselves in the sight of God. And the Lord will raise you up. Now listen, tonight 
The truth is, if you're pretty, you know who gave you that? God did. If you're smart, you know who gave you that brain? God did. If you have a talent, you know who gave it to you? The Lord did. Don't walk around here like you're something, like you think I'm better than everybody else because you're not. If it, God gave it to you and he can take it away just like that. Any talent, any ability, money, you know who gave you your money? God did. If you got it honest, God gave that to you. He gave you the ability to make your money. He, he let you be born at the time you was born in. Gave you a house, land, everything you've got come from the Lord. And buddy, it can be gone, as he said, just like that. So uh, uh, be like that lady who wiped the feet of Jesus with her hair and humbled himself. It'll, it'll take that haughtiness out of you um, uh, when you start thanking him. Like if I get down, if I get down, I start thinking, Lord, you, you gave me my house, and Lord, you gave me my car, and Lord, you gave me my, uh, uh, my, my uh, lawnmower, and Lord, you give me my uh, driveway, and Lord, you give me my food to eat. It'll keep you humble. Being thankful will keep you humble, and it'll help you to stay humble. Uh, turn, in, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let me show you a verse of scripture here. This is, this is worth turning to tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter number 4, and I'll look at a verse here that I think might help you tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter number 4, and look at uh, verse number uh, 7, 1 Corinthians 4, 7. This is an amazing verse of Scripture. It said here, For who maketh thee to differ from another? This is 1 Corinthians 4, 7. And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? What have you got this, that the Lord didn't give you? What hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? You know what that means? That means God give you everything you've got, so why go around acting like you earned it or you deserve it or something like that? It's a gift from God. It'll keep you humble. It'll keep you humble, y'all. Being thankful will keep you humble. you got to... Have you got a, a good brain? You better, why do you walk around acting like you didn't receive it? You did, you received that from God and, and he gave it to you. If you get, if you've made a lot of money, why do you walk around like, I've heard people say, I'm a self-made man. You know, no, you listen, whatever good thing you've got, the Lord give it to you. Amen. Lord give it to you. And so uh, 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 be thankful to him. Number two, the first thing, it'll keep you humble. The second thing a thankful spirit will do to you, it'll keep you happy. It'll keep you happy. Everybody wants to be happy, right? You want me to tell you how to be happy? Stay thankful. Uh, come before his presence with thanksgiving. Somewhere, sometime, uh, you'll become happy if you'll thank the Lord. I, I, I have a lady right now going through marriage trouble, and uh, she sent me a text the other day. Uh, it says, bad, and she said it could be worse. And I said, that's exactly right. That's the exact right way to look at stuff. If you're going through a hard time, remember, it could be worse. You could be, you could be laying over yonder in a hospital tonight uh, with tubes running down your throat and, them, and you're laying there aching and hurting all over. Things could be worse. You could be. You say, well, Brother Danny, I am a hurting all over. You could be in hell. It could be worse. We could be in hell tonight, but we're not. Hallelujah. And if you'll start building on that, I think watching TV is one of the worst things in the world you can do for your happiness because all it does is make you want stuff you ain't got. You, mark my word, a person that watches a lot of TV is never happy because all they got on there is stuff you ain't got. Everybody on there is pretty. Everybody on there is handsome. Everybody on there has got a nice car. Everybody on there lives. It's a, it's a lifestyle. It, you, you just think, my goodness, my goodness, I'm, I'm pitiful. No, you're not. No, you're not. You, you keep a thankful spirit and you'll be happy. Old, old brother Howard, I, hallelujah Howard, I call him hallelujah Howard. Uh, you know why he seems like he's happy? I guess uh, Brother Wayne might have known him longer than me. I don't know. Did you, you know him before I knew him? Uh, back in the 80s, I guess you probably did. You probably knew him before I did. And I'm going to ask, Brother Wayne's seen him hundreds of times. Have you ever seen him one time when he wasn't happy? Never. I ain't neither. And you know that man's went through surgeries. He's had heart attacks. He's went through 
His kids has probably broke his heart. Uh, he's had personal tragedies, but I've never seen it. If he walked in that door right here tonight, he'd, he'd throw up his Bible and say, hey, man, praise the Lord. You know, and you might think, well, that man's crazy. Listen, I'd like, I'm crazy is all right if you're happy. You know, these, all these smart people are miserable. <laughs> I wonder who is crazy. Who is crazy? Uh, all the smarter you are, the crazier you are, uh, the more miserable you are. Uh, he's happy all the time. That's why I call him Hallelujah Howard. Now, you might not can be like that, but I'll tell you one thing. Uh, Jeremy mentioned the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us, so no matter how bad it gets, say, Lord, I thank you I'm not in hell. Lord, I thank you I ain't in the hospital. Lord, I thank you all my kids are saved. Lord, I thank you for this. Thank you. And you be happy. It won't be long you'll be happy. It won't be long. You'll be happy. Some people are so negative. Like I told a guy, I said, uh, man, hang in there, man. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. He said, I seen that light at the end of the tunnel. It's an oncoming train. <laughs> you'll smash me. And, and you'll get like that if you ain't careful. Just everything's wrong. Everything's awful. Everything's negative. Uh, sometimes you ladies, you'll get like that. The devil will, will jump on you and, take, and put you in a negative mode. And, and you can't see nothing positive. And you can't see nothing uh, but here's what you do. When that time comes, you get down and say, Lord, I thank you that my name is in your book. And there ain't enough devils in hell to take it out. And I'm on my way to that fair land. And one day all my problems will be over. And I may have it rough now, but hallelujah, there's a day, better day of coming. It won't be long, you'll be happy. I promise you. I promise you. A thankful spirit will keep you happy. Amen? How about that one woman? She was mad and got mad because her government wouldn't pay for her Botox. That's, that's America for you, isn't it? That's America. Uh, I, I picked this boy up at church and uh, he was telling me, I said, where'd your daughter get them braces? And he said, Medicaid paid for them. I said, Lord, I paid $2,700 for my daughter. And that was like a long time ago. And I, I, remember, I remember having to borrow the money and paid it off in payments, $2,700. I, I think I paid them $100 a month for two years. And I thought, y'all get them. And now they're mad because it won't pay for Botox. The government, Medicaid pays for Botox. Lord, I might no doubt she needs it, but uh, she ought to pay for it. She ought to have to pay for it, ain't that right? Say amen. amen. Uh, but anyway, uh, it'll keep you happy. It'll keep you happy. Just remember... Could be worse. Remember, could be worse. Number three, number three. You might be shocked at this one. Number one, being thankful will keep you humble. Number two, being thankful will keep you happy. Number three, being thankful can help you stay healthy. I believe that. I believe that happy people that are right with God benefit health-wise. I believe that. Studies have shown that people who praise the Lord and say, look at Howard, 80 years old, 82 years old. And uh, you think he's a teenager. Some little smart guy at the gym the other day. I was in there playing ball, you know, and he's, there, and he's watching me shoot, and he said, man, how do you learn how to shoot like that? Something like that, you know, and he was having, they, they take them boys, they're about 12, 13, they get in trouble at school, and their, their punishment is they have to do community work, so they make them work in the gym. And he finally came over there, and I was messing around with him, and he said, he said, you're an old man trapped in a little kid body. And I started to smack him, but I thought, you know, that's a truth. That's a truth. I said, you nailed it, boy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, he, but uh, uh, Brother Howard, he's, he's, I believe, I believe. I'm not saying that if you live right, you'll never get sick. Because we will. We will. I mean, there ain't no avoiding it. But I still think it helps you get happy. Take your Bible and turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. And uh, I do believe and can prove that some, and I say some, make sure if you quote me, quote me right, some of our health problems are a direct result of our disobedience to the Lord. And I didn't say all. You know, people say, oh, you can't say just because somebody got sick. They said, no, I can't. And I ain't saying that. 
I might fall over here with a heart attack right now, and I deserve it if I do. But I do believe that some of our sickness is a direct result of our sins. Look at uh, verse number, chapter 3 and verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord. My favorite verse, these two. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Look at verse eight. It, what? Them first seven. It shall be health to thy navel. That's your belly button. And marrow to thy bones. There's a verse that promises that if you'll live right and serve God, that it can help you stay healthy. For example, if a man smokes five packs of cigarettes a day and drinks, drinks six pack of beer, you know good and well he's, he's not going to be as healthy as a, as a person that comes to church every Sunday and lives right and gets a, a proper amount of sleep, proper amount of rest, don't stay upset all the time, running from the cops, getting fights out in bars and, and stuff like that. You know, you know it can keep you healthy. It can keep you healthy, amen? Uh, it can help you. Uh, it can help you get out of trouble. It can help you uh, stay out. Of, now, now, I'm not saying, please don't think, you say, well, I'm sick, I must not be living right. No, 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 no. No, don't, don't think that at all. We're all gonna get it sooner or later. I don't care how right with God you are, something's gonna get you. If you stay here in this world long enough, it's going to be a heart attack, blood pressure, cancer, uh, stroke, sugar. Something, it's going, something going to get you no matter how right you are. That's for all the sins you've got in your life. And if you've never even done nothing wrong, it's still going to get you because you've got the seed of sin in you when you're born. Now, I, I, here's what I pray. I pray, Lord, keep it down to a minimum. Let that little seed of sin in me that you, that, uh, that's never going to get out of me till I die Keep it to a minimum, please. Keep it to a minimum, if it can be your will. And uh, it, can be, it can help you to be healthy, all right? Last, number four, what did I say? Number one, it'll keep you humble. Number two, keep you happy. Number three, keep you healthy. And finally, keep you holy. Keep you holy. Where do I get that? That verse over there that says, unthankful, unholy. As soon as you quit being thankful, you'll start getting some kind of wicked sin in your heart and life. You mark my word. As soon as you start taking God's blessing for granted, it won't be long you'll think, ah, that song ain't so bad. Ah, that movie ain't so bad. Ah, a little bit won't hurt. Ah, a little lie won't, ain't no big deal. I lied a little bit, but God understands. I'm doing better than I used to be. You know, no, 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 no. If you're thankful Brother, you'll get down and you'll say, God, you've been so good to me. I'm going to live right. Lord, if, if somebody said, let's go watch a movie and you know it ain't right, you'll say, God's been too good to me. Thank you, Lord. He's blessed me too good. Unthankful, unholy. Unthankful, unholy. You know what makes us unholy? We become unthankful. Being thankful will keep you holy. The Bible said the goodness of God leads people to repentance. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Amen. Uh, old Moses came in one day and he said, Lord, I about had it. Lord, Lord, you're going to have to help me. Lord, you're going to have to help me. Show me your glory. And you know what the Lord did? You know, the Lord said, you can't see my face and live. The, the absolute pure face of the glory of God would kill a man if he saw it. And but God put, he, put him in that rock and put his hand over him. And the Lord said, I'm going to pass by so you can see my hinder parts. And the Lord just went whoosh, and showed Moses his glory Moses made it just fine, buddy. He made it just fine. So being thankful leads you to be holy. You'll look down and you'll say, man, I can't do that. God's been too good to me. I can't go to that place. God's been too good to me. Sometimes it ain't like, oh, man, the Lord's going to knock my head off. It does. He might knock your head off. But sometimes what keeps you from sinning is the goodness of God. The Lord's been too good to me. 
How can I do that? How can I sin against him that's had so much mercy on me? You stay thankful like that. It'll keep you holy. Amen? It brings hope to the hopeless. It brings grace to those that have no grace. Being thankful. I've already talked to you about uh, your family. I hope that everybody here will be good to your family tomorrow and be a witness. Uh, how many of you here tonight have somebody in your family that's maybe saved but not right with God or maybe not even saved that you'll see tomorrow? Raise your hand. That's just about all of us, just about everybody in here. I've got, uh, I've got one family member that I'll see tomorrow that I'm, I really doubt the salvation. I really do. I, I hope you say, but it may, so I'm praying the Lord will help me to be a witness. I have witnessed to them. I've given tracts. I've, I've, I witness every time we go to the group. And, and my sister, uh, she, she's decorating her cabin right now all day today. She took off work and she's, she's got a beautiful cabin over in the mountains over between Old Fort and Black Mountain. And I'm telling you what, big old river running right past it and trout in there about that long. And uh, she, she does fall, her decorations are sort of weird. She does this color stuff and Christmas mixed together on her tree and stuff. It, and I, I guess it's all right, but she sort of mixes and, and they really go all out. And he, he does a big turkey and they'll do everything. And when it gets time to pray, she'll say, uh, they say, Danny, say grace. And I say, Grace, and, and they say, I said, oh, you mean you want me to ask the blessing? As, as they say, Danny, bless the food. I said, I can't bless it, but I'll ask the Lord to if you want me to. Why you have to be so technical? I, I'm teaching you, I'm teaching you uh, doctrine. Uh, you can't bless food. You can't bless it. You can ask the Lord to bless it. Right? That's the truth, isn't it? You can't say grace. That's some old Catholic nonsense. Uh, something like that. So uh, uh, if they, when she says pray, I'm going to say, all right, everybody, we're ready to pray. And everybody gets real quiet and I say, before we pray, <laughs> oh boy, here it comes, our annual lecture. That's right. It sure is. Amen. Uh, and, and you're going to get your chance too. Be a witness to your family. You may never see them again. You may get the call next week. They're gone into eternity. Don't be obnoxious. Don't be a holier than thou, smart aleck, self-righteous, but be a witness for the Lord the way you wish you had one day when we stand before him. All right? I'm going to stop right there. Does anybody want to say something, ask something, or ask prayer request or something for tomorrow or anything right now? We're going to pray. Anyone? Yes, those.